Hi guys, Angel Fishkeeper, and I'm going to do uh, a new series, which is fish profiles. And the first one I'm going to do, probably obviously, is the angelfish, or Terephyllum scalar, or scalari, however you want to pronounce it. Um, but they actually fit into three categories, it's not just the scalari. You've got Terephyllum scalari, which is what I have here. These are platinum blue silver angels, which means um, they're basically silver in colour with the black stripes. But the platinum blue means that instead of it being silver, it's a whitish blue. Or an electric blue, as you could call them. The other two are Terephyllum Altum, which are the genuine Altum Angels, which are the wild courts from the Rio Orinoco River in, I think it's Colombia. It's a few rivers in Colombia and Venezuela. The distribution's really, really small for the Altum Angels, the genuine Altums. You can get Peruvian Altums, but they're technically they are just silver angelfish. There's no difference. Um, and the last one, you don't see them around very often, are Terephyllum leopoldi, which basically have a completely different head shape. They have more of a... quite a smooth head. It's not as defined. They have the stripes also, but in the middle, where the dorsal fin meets the back, they have a black spot. And they're really rare angels to find. Oh, sorry, there's another one. Uh, Manacoparu angels, which are basically sil silver angels with a bright red back. They're also known as the red back angels. An average size for an angel fish, domestic angels, so the scolari, would be about six inches long by on average about 10 inches tall, 10 inches in height. Whereas the Altums, the genuine wild angels, it's about eight inches long by, I've seen them up to 16 inches tall. They're a really, really impressive fish. So you do need a deep tank when you get into keeping those kind of angels. And then the Manacopru and the Leopoldi is the same as the Scolari, about six, six inches long, ten inches tall. Can get up to a foot tall. They're in the cichlid family. So these are a type of cichlid. So they can get quite territorial. A lot of people best advise you don't keep them with small fish like tetras. But I've always seen it as they live with tetras in the wild. You know, they come from the exact same rivers. They're found regularly with neons and cardinals and Corydoras. So I've got them in with cardinals and Corydoras. Uh, normally they will like a tall aquarium because of the body shape. They don't necessarily need the length. It's mainly the height that these guys need. Um, wood is a good addition to the tank because normally when you find these guys in the wild, that's where you'll find them in the tree roots. But you know, with the likes of these guys, they've never seen the wild. So you know, they don't, these guys aren't going to care what they're in with. These are not wild courts, these are technically a man-made fish. You will not find platinum blue silver angels in the wild. These are a man-made fish. You'll find normal silvers in the wild, but that's basically what these are. Deep down, if you broke everything down, if you took all the genes away, they are just plain silver angels with a bit of fancy genes that give them a few fancy colours. 
So I'd technically say they're semi-aggressive. They're a semi-aggressive fish, but I've still found that they can be kept in the community style tank. As long as the tank's big enough. If you keep the angels well fed, they do not eat the other fish. You know? And the way I, I like to do it is I buy the angel fish really small. Because the likes of cardinals, they only live around two, three years. It'll take angels around that time, if not longer, about five years, to actually get anywhere near big enough to be able to eat them. Although angelfish do get big, their mouths don't. You know, they're a big fish with a small mouth. So I've never had any problem with angelfish eating the other fish, ever. You know, although yes, I have heard people have had angelfish and they've been the worst fish they've ever had. They've been little devils. But personally, my experience, never had a problem. Uh, I would highly recommend angelfish. They're one of my favourite fish to keep. Their body shape's really interesting with them being obviously taller, circle-bodied cichlids. It's not your standard cichlid shape. So obviously when you say, oh, they're cichlids, people go, what? Cichlids don't look like cichlids, but they are. Same as discus, both in the cichlid family. The only aggression I've ever had out of these is when they're breeding. So you can see there's two males there bickering. That's the only time I ever get problems. And obviously this tank's not huge. All these tanks are like 80 litres. So there's not a lot of space for them to get away from each other. You know, I think four is pushing it. You know, for the likes of these. I'm not going to keep four in here when they get fully grown. But for the size they are now, four is fine. They're going to have a good few years in here before they'll need upgrading. And again, depending on the angelfish as well, it's going to depend on the price you pay for them. Um, in my area, you'd be looking around the £4 mark, which is probably about, I don't know, 5 $6. I don't know, I don't really work in dollars. Um, but they can range up for ridiculous money, like the Alton Angels, for the genuine, genuine wild courts, um, F1s. Or wilds, you'd be looking at possibly a hundred and twenty pound of fish for just one. For one fish, and that's not necessarily a big one either. Obviously, different suppliers will do them for you'd be able to pick them up possibly cheaper, possibly even more expensive. Private breeders. You're going to pay through the teeth for them. You know, um, Leopold eyes are expensive wherever you get them because they're fairly rare. Manacoparoos, the redbacks, they're like a medium priced. They're around the 25, 30 pound a fish. And then you've got the super red koi's, which are like a koi, but instead of them being orange, black and white, they have barely any white on them. That's what they're trying to breed out of that fish and just breed it so it's like solid red with the black. And they cost you an arm and a leg as well, up to £120 a fish. You know, which I admit is ridiculous for angelfish. It really is. They're a pricey fish. But I find them an amazing entry level cichlid to the hobby if you want to add something different to your tank, whether it is community or whether you're gonna have whether you're gonna add larger fish in with them, like maybe barbs, uh dwarf cichlids. I mean I'm a purist so I don't like to mix fish from different areas. I like to keep them all together as you would find them in the wild. Obviously plants 
I don't really care. Obviously, because in here I've got Java Fern and Staragini. Neither of them are found in the Amazon. Staragini is North America. Whereas the, Am uh, the Java Fern is uh, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, basically Asia is where that's from. And the Hygrophilia is also North America. So none of these plants are found with these fish. But all these fish live together in the wild. The cardinals, the angels and the quarries. And I like to just keep one species of angel, one species of tetra and a species of catfish. So the f focus point of the tank is the angels. I don't want to mix 20 different species together. I just think it looks a bit too busy and there's a bit too much going on but yeah that's just a quick species profile on the angelfish <laughs>